Hey, this is Scott, and today we're just going to take a quick look at the Snapa mobile app, specifically with the Snapa M1 smartphone gimbal. I'm also using the iPhone 10 today, but uh, these on-screen displays and everything should be relatively similar no matter what phone you are using. So first off, let's go ahead and open up the app, and you'll get this screen here where you can click enter the device, and it will give you an on-screen guide as to how to line up uh, your phone in the gimbal. And I just click confirm, and you can see I've connected to my Bluetooth before, so it automatically connected for me. But if you are not connected yet, you go ahead and click this icon in the bottom right corner, and it will list your device. You can click it and connect right there. First off, we're just going to run through the different icons on screen. Starting from the top left, we have these three dots, which will give you some parameters you can adjust, such as the shutter speed, the uh, flash or the light being on or off, your white balance, your uh, focus distance. So uh, if you don't want your focus to automatically be hunting during your video, uh, setting it manually here could be uh, very useful. And if you want to go back to any automatic setting for any of these, just click the icon at the top again, and it will return to the automatic setting. And finally, at the bottom, we have your ISO, which you can adjust in the same way. Clicking the three dots will bring you back to that main menu here, and clicking it once more will bring you out of that menu. Just under that, we have the camera icon, which if you click, will give you three options. They are video, panorama, and the bon bottom option is for time lapse. I will go more into these in detail later in the video. For now, let's move on with the icons on screen. Under that, we have the record button, which is pretty self-explanatory. And under that is the button to reverse the camera, which I'm not going to do right now because that would be embarrassing. Under that, we have the option uh, to adjust the different modes for your gimbal. Uh, if you are connected to your gimbal with Bluetooth using this app, this is the only way that you can adjust the modes of your gimbal. Uh, the button will not work. If you're not using this app, then the button on your gimbal will change the modes. But again, if you're using this app, this is how you're going to do it. The top one here is pan track, which will follow in the pan motion. Under that, we have lock, which will hold it in one place. And under that, we have omni track, which will follow both in the pan and the tilt directions. Under that last, we have the uh, object track, where you'll just draw a little square on screen, and it will track that uh, object if it's moving. This is obviously not moving at all, so I don't have the gimbal activated right now, uh, so it doesn't work. But as far as I can tell, it works as well as you should expect it to work. I haven't had any problems with it so far. We'll go back into the lock mode for now and move on. On the top right of the screen, we have your library, which will show you all of the stuff that you have recorded so far. Uh, you can go ahead and save some of this to your camera roll if you want to right in this menu as well. Under that, we have some options for grid lines. You can have none, standard grid lines, or grid lines plus diagonals. Let's turn that off for now and move on. Under that, we have the different resolutions and frame rates. We have from 540p up to 2160p and from 30 frames per second up to 120 frames per second in 1080p. Uh, we don't have any 4K and we also don't have 24 frames per second options. Uh, that would be nice to see in the future. Under that, we have the settings menu, which will uh, have quite a few options here. We'll get into in depth a little bit after this. And finally, again, we have the Bluetooth mark at the bottom, which will show you if you're connected to your gimbal. And if you're not, you can press it to connect. It will bring you into this menu, which we showed you before. Going more in depth into the settings menu, we have the Bluetooth settings at the top, which will bring you back to that same screen we had before. Your gimbal settings will allow you to adjust things like the pan track, the tilt track, horizontal adjustment and vertical adjustment. And then under that, we have your firmware info, which will tell you your current firmware. And also if there's anything available to upgrade to, you can upgrade very quickly here. And under that is auto calibration. Once again, we'll go more in depth into that in just a second. There are two options here, which will go into both of them. Under that, we have a quick guide. I'm not connected to the internet right now, but there are a series of videos you can watch on here uh, directly from your phone that will show you how to use your gimbal. And under that, we have the user guide, which has a user guide both for the gimbal and for the app. The app is actually very useful here. It will show you a series of screenshots with some explanations on screen of the different icons and how they work. So if you have any questions and you want to see quickly uh, how something works, you can go into that user guide right there. Finally, we just have the privacy and security and about Snapa information screens, but we don't need to look at that. So now let's take a look at how the auto calibration works. Again, there are two kinds here. There's the drift calibration and level calibration. And when you need to use both is written right on screen for you. 
The drift calibration will help you if you find your smartphone slowly drifting to the left or right, and then you can please calibrate your device using this option here. If you click on drift calibration, it will tell you please place the gimbal on a horizontal surface and start the calibration. Don't touch the gimbal until the calibration is completed, which takes about one or two minutes. So I'll go ahead and do that now, just place it onto a level surface, click calibration, and you'll see the process happening. It tells you don't touch the gimbal, so don't. Just wait a little bit and you will see the notification when it is done. Next up, let's take a look at the level calibration. Once again, if you click it, it will give you an on-screen guide, this time including some pictures to show you how to position your gimbal. Uh, keep in mind that the bottom here is where the table will be. It's all black, so it's a little bit difficult to understand at the beginning. Uh, but, for example, if you do this incorrectly, I'll place it laying down on the table right now and click calibration. It will tell you, it will give you an alert that you are doing it incorrectly, so you don't have to worry about accidentally doing this the wrong way. So let's return this to the correct position, standing up on the table, and I will go ahead and open this clip just as it's shown in the picture. Click calibration, and it will very quickly move to step two, where you can lay it on the side. Click calibration. Lay it on the back. Click calibration. Lay it on the other side. Click calibration. Lay it on the front side. Click calibration. And then finally, close the clip and stand it uh, on the top and click calibration once more. And now your calibration is complete. So let's go ahead and throw my phone back into here and exit out to the menu, to the main screen here. Open it up uh, and you can see there is no drift and everything should be calibrated properly here. So uh, it's a very simple, easy process to do. Uh, it only takes a minute or two, so anytime you think that something's messed up, just go ahead and go through that process, and you should be ready to go. So next up, let's take a look at some of these other options in this video menu. Let's go on to the panorama setting. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. The direction that your camera is pointing will be basically the center of your panorama, and if you push the record button, it will just go ahead and take a series of photos for you at uh, different positions and it will automatically stitch them together into a panorama for you and save it into your library. So if you go into your library, that panorama that you just took will be saved in here. There we go. Uh, this is nothing special, of course, but um, this is how it will work. If you want to save it again, click on the bottom and you can save it to your photo album and then go back and do a bunch of other cool stuff. The other option in here is the motion time lapse. And the motion time lapse, when you have it activated, will give you a few different options in this menu here that you can adjust. Of course, you still have your shutter speed, your white balance, and ISO. Uh, but these menu options here have been changed to your interval. You can adjust uh, how many seconds you want between shots here, between individual frames of your final time motion, time lapse video. It goes from 0 0.5 up to 20 uh, and everywhere in between. So I'll set it at one for now. And then if you go back, you also have uh, the option for movement. So this is again, motion time lapse. So you can choose anywhere from minus 100 up to positive 100. And the minus and positive difference is only which direction it will move. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set this to, let's say, minus 37 for now. I'm not sure exactly what these um, numbers mean. Um, obviously, the bigger the number, the more motion you'll get between shots. Um, it's basically just a speed. So go ahead and uh, play around with this and see what works for your particular setup and situation. Uh, but for now, I'll just show you with these settings here. Uh, and also, if you want to make sure that you don't have any difference in white balance or ISO or brightness or anything between shots, go ahead and set these manually in here. All you have to do is kind of move it just a little bit and it will uh, shift over to a manual setting here. Sorry about that. Let me click into, yep, this is all in manual now. It's all set in manual. The red or orange color means that it's manual, which means that it won't change automatically while you're doing your time lapse. After that, all you have to do is push the record button and your time lapse will start. It gives you your uh, settings on the top here, your time, your ISO, your color uh, balance, 
and also your settings. I did find though that if you don't go ahead and actually re-choose your frames per second and resolution, it automatically jumps into 60 frames per second at 720p. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this here and go into my resolution menu. And I'm already at 1080 and 30 frames per second, so I'll just kind of switch it off and go back into that once and try this once more. Uh, and you can see that now my settings are as they should be. I'm not sure why that little glitch happens, but just be aware that you do want to make sure you kind of re-choose your resolution and frames per second before you start your time lapse to make sure that it is how you want it. So again, uh, now I'm at 30 frames per second, which means um, my one second interval would give me one second of video if I take uh, 30 seconds effectively of this time lapse. So let's let it get up to about 30 seconds and then we will stop it by just clicking stop on screen and go into, sorry about that, go into our library here uh, and let's check that out. There's about one second of video there, which is how it should be. Um, it gives you some information at the bottom here too, your resolution and uh, frame rate, as well as the duration of the final video. So that's basically all there is to the Snapa app. It works very well uh, for the most part, except for that one little glitch in the motion time-lapse that I did mention. Uh, otherwise, if you have any questions that uh, you don't want to have to watch through this whole video for, remember, go into the user guide, and there is a very nice little um, guide here that explains quite a lot about this app. Uh, I found it very easy to use, and again, a lot of help available in this menu in the actual app itself if you need it. Otherwise, if you have any questions you'd like to ask me, be sure to leave that down below and I will definitely get back to you. If you liked this video or found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to see more in the future. And as always, thank you for watching.